Hello everyone. The urban areas in India are characterized by two extremes. On one hand, we see development happening all around. Our cities have become growth centers. People are migrating from every corner. And then there is cost of that development we are paying in terms of damage we are causing to the ecology. So distinctly we can find two extremes in any city in India. Take an example of any typical city in India. What do we see? We see roads, uh, build, roads and bridges coming up, you know, buildings getting constructed. There are industries right in the midst of the cities. Tertiary sector is blooming. IT spaces, office spaces are coming up. These all things are needed for development to provide livelihood, to provide housing to the ever increasing population of our cities. However, we are paying a big price for that. That cost we are paying is in terms of maybe, say, excessive concretization. There is hardly any open plot you get to see in our cities. Deforestation, a plot is to be developed, building is going to come up, trees are to be cut. We always have a very good rationalization, you know, why it is inevitable to save those trees. Pollution, I don't need to say more. We all see what happens in uh, Delhi every winter. By the way, condition in Mumbai and Pune could be no better. Cramped spaces, a very serious problem. Most of our population, the people are forced to live in suboptimum condition. It is high time we do something for that. Climate change is real, erratic rainfall, flooding, increase in temperatures in urban areas, maybe again because of concretization. So these are the damages which we are causing to ecology as unintended outcomes of our development. You know, just to emphasize this point more, let us look at uh, satellite images of uh, few cities over the period of time. This is Chennai in 1990, and just see what happens within 30 years. This is Chennai in 2020. All green areas are almost taken over by built-up spaces. This is Hyderabad in 1985. Again, within 35 years, all buildings everywhere. This is Delhi in 1990. Within the period of 30 years, by 2020, Except for maybe some portion in central and southern portion parts of the Delhi, buildings everywhere. So we can see the problem everywhere. Development is happening which is very much needed. But then the damages which development is causing is also there. And these two extremes we are facing everywhere. So there is a trade-off. The trade-off is visible. But is this trade-off really unavoidable? You know, it all depends on the attitude with which we are looking at a problem. Let me give you an example. A plot is to be developed. Uh, there is a tree on that plot of a 50 years age. That tree is to be cut. By giving permission to cut that tree, we ask them to plant 50 more trees as compensatory afforestation. Can anybody give guarantee that either of those 50 trees is going to last for the next 50 years and going to be as big as this one 50 years old tree being cut? Nobody can give that guarantee. So compensatory afforestation may help to some extent, but it certainly may not be effective or enough to mitigate the damages caused by mindless cutting of trees. For that, we need intentional, intentional effort in creating green spaces in our cities. And that's why the concept of you know, urban loves. Let us accept our cities are choking. We need to de-choke our cities. We need to you know, create breathing spaces in our cities for citizens. We need to make them realize what it feels to be amongst nature, what it feels to be inside a forest while they are living in a concrete jungle. Let me introduce you all to a concept of uh, called Miyawaki Urban Forest here. A Miyawaki Miyawaki plantation draws its name after Mr. Miyawaki, who was a Japanese botanist. A Miyawaki plantation is a little different from conventional way of plantation as we understand it. In conventional way of plantation, we you know, uh, dig a pit and then plant a tree. While in case of Miyawaki plantation, uh, maybe we uh, uh, rolled pit, uh, dig an isolated pit, the whole land belt is dug, soil is uh, treated, put back, trees are planted. Another aspect in which Miyawaki and conventional plantation are different, the density of plantation. In case of conventional plantation, the density is around uh, one plant per three to four square meter. While in case of Miyawaki plantation, the it is a much denser plantation, by the way, the density is three to four plants per square meter. And there are many, you know, observed benefits of Miyawaki plantation. Some of those benefits are 
you observe 10 times faster growth. Then 30 times denser plantation you will get to see. It supports 100 times more biodiversity. You, it provides 30 times better noise and dust reduction by sheer number of trees which are there and because of various species that we are planting. It provides 30 times better carbon dioxide absorption and two very important aspects which we have, which we are seeing of implementation of biology forest in our cities. We are not planting any exotic species. We are planting only 100% native trees. You know, native tree in Western garden would be different from native tree in Himachal. So we need to understand which trees are native to your area and then we need to decide which species we are going to plant and accordingly we carry out plantation. And lastly, 100% organic way of plantation, no chemical fertilizer being used, still getting this kind of result. Uh, things like cow dung or juamru are being used and this is how Mayawaki plantation is carried out. As a result, an 100 year old forest can be achieved in just 10 years. Now, is it to say that Miyawaki urban forest will replace a conventional uh, forest? Certainly not. It can never do that. However, Miyawaki forest can definitely provide, you know, some solution to cramped spaces in our cities. We don't have land available for plantation and given the mindless cutting of trees, it is high time we start developing green areas intentionally in our cities. Let me tell you two stories. I used to be in Nagpur. I used to work in Nagpur population earlier. Nagpur has this dumping yard at a place called Bandiwadi. And the plot right beside the dumping yard was being developed by Simbaji. Some beautiful university was coming up. They would keep complaining that they have a problem of bad smell, air and uh, dust pollution because they were nice to, uh, right next to dumping yard. And they would request, can we create some kind of obstruction in between? While they already had built a wall there, but then that was not enough. So around that time, I came across uh, you know, uh, a Jew named uh, Green Yatra and the Miyawaki Forest developed by them. I used to follow somebody on Twitter that lady shared a story of a success story of a Miyawaki plantation in Mumbai done by a Jew named Green Yatra. I tried to find who was the person behind that and that is how I could reach Mr. Pradeep Tripathi who was the founder of Green Yatra NGO. I requested Mr. Tripathi to come down to Nagpur if we could carry out a, you know, Miyawaki urban forest in Nagpur. My idea was to you know, develop a linear Miyawaki forest along the edges of dumping yard, say 10 to 15 meter by 1 kilometer, so that it provides a natural protection, first visible obstruction, as well as natural protection against air and dust pollution, which is there on the process, process side. Interestingly, the way Green Yatra used to function, they never used to take any payment directly from the government, so it used to work on a CSR model. We couldn't raise any CSR in Nagpur. We requested them to continue as a consultant and the plantation started, around that time I was transferred out. Fortunately, the plantation went ahead and we came up with a beautiful Miyawaki forest in Nagpur. The photograph, upper photograph which you see, the white compound wall, that was the wall right beside Simbolsis University. And the place where Miyawa, the, the dumping I used to be there, a beautiful Miyawaki forest has come up and it is providing direct you know, protection against uh, air and dust pollution on the dumping yard side. I must mention here, this must be the first uh, Miyawaki forest on a dumping yard anywhere in India. And I'm very happy to share that now Nagpur Corporation is continuing the project along the uh, all the edges of Bandiwadi dumping yard. Then I came to Navi Mumbai. Uh, again, I requested Green Yatra uh, to you know, uh, carry out few uh, uh, Miyawaki urban forest projects in Navi Mumbai. We narrowed down the location in Kokar Bhairne, in Nisar Kudyan Garden. And there we identified a six acre land. In two phases, we planted 60,000 trees. The result was astounding. Can you believe these two pictures are taken just 16 months apart? We started our plantation in around March 2021 and within 16 months, plants had already reached the height of 20 feet. A variety a species like tea wood, which traditionally is known to be a slow grower, was growing, you know, within 10 to 12 months, it had grown up to 15 feet. So we had, you know, got wonderful result in Sir Gudan. Encouraged by this result, the next site we took in Navi Mumbai was well of Navi Mumbai in Nehru area, again garden. We allocated 10 acres of land and planted 1 lakh 30,000 trees. We got beautiful uh, Miyawaki forest there. Plantation started around March 2022. And within 10 months, plant had reached almost 15 feet height. People living, you know, in the vicinity of these two gardens were so happy. These are some of the photographs of uh, Sir Gudan Miyawaki forest. We can see how beautifully the forest has come up. I must mention here, 
Nisarga Udyan used to be a dumping site of Navi Mumbai Municipal Corporation earlier. It was scientifically closed, garden was developed, and then we, you know, developed Miyawaki Forest there. This is a trail of Navi Mumbai Miyawaki Forest. One of the benefits we have observed of Miyawaki Arman Forest in our cities is the biodiversity it sustains. You know, human beings are not the original habitants of urban areas. These spaces were originally inhabited by many plant, animal, and bird species. And in our Miyawaki, bio, you know, uh, Miyawaki forest, we are seeing apart from 60 to 70 plant species that we have planted, many animal, bird, reptile species, even uh, insects. We are trying to document all these uh, species which are turning up in our Miyawaki forest. It is very, you know, heartening to see that. And uh, uh, in a way, it is uh, restoring the ecological balance in our cities. So far, we have in Navi Mumbai planted more than 3 lakh trees at 12 locations. You know, I keep doing these numbers. I must mention here that our survival ratio is more than 95%. The best part was this whole exercise was carried out through a convergence. As a corporation, we made the land available. Green Yatra was the NGO who had expertise of implementation of Miyawaki. They executed the project. And then there were corporates who were willing to do their own bit for the ecological restoration. And through this convergence came up these beautiful forests. As such, it cost zero to public. We saved more than 50 crore in Navi Mumbai itself. <coughs> but more than saving money, what was important for me? You know, take an example, a road or a bridge is getting constructed through a contractor. And then we have the kind of forest or a plantation is happening through a contractor. I personally believe Development of a forest or a plantation cannot happen successfully through contractor. These kind of things requires dedication. It requires, you know, kind of, uh, you know, love with which you do that. And that can happen only when you do it through a dedicated NGO like Green Yatra. In short, we have created urban lungs in our city. They say it takes two fully grown trees to, you know, create oxygen required by one adult for a year. Say in a city like city with a population of 50 to 60 lakh, how many trees would be required? We might as well start as early as possible. The story doesn't end here. I am presently working in Thane Municipal Corporation, and we have identified 10 locations in Thane where we are in the first place starting with 1 lakh 50 thousand you know plantation. Interestingly, Thane, you must be aware, is known as a city of lakes. Uh, there are more than 30 lakes in Thane. Unfortunately, some of our lakes are as bad as any you know. Uh, lake in typical uh, uh, city in India. <laughs> Green Yatra interestingly has uh, expertise in lake rejuvenation as well and we are taking up uh, rejuvenation of more than uh, around 15 to 20 lakes with Green Yatra. I must mention here they rejuvenate a single lake in flat 90 days, be it a 10 acre lake or 100 acre lake. So before onset of monsoon we must be finishing 4 to 5 and uh, within next year we are planning to, you know, uh, complete 15 to 20 lakes with uh, Green Yatra. I'll end with a video. This video showcases our experience in Nisargudya as well as Trail of Navi Mumbai in uh, uh, Navi Mumbai uh, city. Right from land preparation, you will get to see various stages of uh, the forest was growing and how it feels to be inside uh, the Miyawaki forest. Let us see the video.